the YouTube or Facebook Live doesn't work at the moment, we can repost the video on our YouTube and Facebook later. Facebook right. Live is up at the moment. So we are live on Facebook. Right, right. Good morning, Ajahn Vimonit. Good morning, Ajahn Adisa from Prince of Songkha, right? Oh. Our, our colleagues, our friends. Oh, really? Ajahn Adisa is here as well? Here mm -hmm. as well, right. Hi. Long hi. time no see. <laughs> right, our, our colleagues, right? Yeah. Right, right now we have 100 participants joining us. There will be about 100 joining us soon, right? <laughs> So while we are waiting, can we tell them a little bit more about options that they can do, like features? What's the difference between chat and Q&A, maybe? Uh, mm -hmm. Would you mind, Ajahn Pimseri, would you like to tell? No, Steve. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. But right now, we have 100 participants joining us. Mm -hmm. 100 joining us soon, right? Um, just, just, just before we begin, um, um, yes, I think so somebody is watching the live, yeah. it's echoing right now. Okay, so. Be okay. That's go on, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. Okay. So the echo's gone. Sorry about the um, some technical issues. So um, just before we, we begin, uh, thank you very much for everyone who's watching us on our live uh, webinar. This is our first free webinar conducted by the Language Institute Thomas Hart University. So thank you very much. Um, just uh, one more thing. Um, we've got, um, I don't want to call it uh, a problem. It's, um, it's some kind of technical issue right now uh, because it looks like <laughs> Zoom allows us to go live on only one channel at the moment, okay? So um, the best way for, for you to view us right now is actually via our YouTube live, okay? Our oh. YouTube live yes yeah, so we were now live on youtube so when you go to youtube okay uh click um you search language institute tamasad university language institute tamasad university and then you can see us live right now okay uh the quality is actually much much better than um facebook live okay so i can um actually maybe share with you very, very quickly, okay, what it looks like, okay. So, um, okay, so you can see here, okay, when you go to YouTube and you you search here, yeah, you search Language Institute Tamasai University and then you will see us live looking like this, okay. So, sorry, a little bit about um, the, the delay, but right now you can watch us on YouTube live, okay, so I'm just gonna stop sharing. Okay, what, what, so what about what about people who are not in the webinar? How how can they see this? Uh, people who are not in the webinar now they can see us uh, live on YouTube. YouTube. Okay. They, they yes. know how to, right? They know how to access YouTube. Yes, we we will we will post the information on uh, our Facebook page so that everyone is um, noted. Okay. Right, okay, so uh, not to waste time, I think um, we should begin our webinar right now. Okay, so thank you very much one more time. Okay, everybody. Okay, so today, like I said before, this is our first webinar, okay, from LITU, from the Language Institute Thomas Hart University, okay. Uh, today we have our experienced, knowledgeable ELT professors, lecturers, teachers who can share with us their ideas about how to survive in this COVID-19, don't want to say crisis, but situation, okay. So here we have uh, Ajahn Mot, Dr. Monton, okay, can open put Ajahn Mot, so if you can say, okay. And we have uh, Dr. Panna Chaturangkakut Ajahn Sai, okay. We have uh, 
ดรสิชนโอเคอาจารย์แมทโอเค and then we also อาจารย์เปรมกายสกุลประเสริฐศรีโอเคอาจารย์โอ our beloved อาจารย์โอ and of course โอเค the most important person โอเค who we cannot forget otherwise this webinar will not happen is อาจารย์จูนโอเค associate professor ดรสุพงศ์ตั้งเคียงศิริสินโอเค our director โอเค at the language institute ธรรมศาสตร์ university โอเค so before we begin our webinar today I like uh to don't want to say invite we don't want it to <laughs> Mm -hmm. Could you please uh, say a few words just to welcome all the audience from all around the world who's watching us right now on uh, YouTube Live as well as uh, our webinar. Okay. Uh, good morning. So, you know, when we knew that the university would be closed because of the virus outbreak and, you know, we had to teach online, I believe that all of us, you know, were shocked, right? Because you know we were not prepared for that, but because you know the the show must go on, so we had to try to find some toolkits, all right, to help us teach online. And you know because of the lockdown, okay, we had to practice social distancing, and so we had to teach from home. We were str struggling with many difficulties. Some of us, you know, bought new devices. You know, some of us, you know, had to had a lot to spend. Okay, we. Spend a lot of money, right, during uh, the break as well. So you know, some of us, you know, bought new devices to use in their online class classes. So like you know, some of us, you know, bought new iPads, new laptops, new mobile phones, right, to use, you know, for our classes and for our uh, life, you know, in the disruptive world. Okay, and so you know, we have survived apparently. Okay, so thank you, you know, for joining our first seminar this morning. This is our very first webinar, okay, being broadcasted the whole world. So our colleagues from the Language Institute of Tamasad University are here to share with you some ideas about how they have taught online, okay, how they have survived the previous semester, how they are going to move on, and hope you gain from our session today and enjoy. Thank you. Hey, hey. So Thank you very much, Ajahn Sumpong. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, Ajahn Sumpong will not be with us right. uh, for the next two hours because he's a very busy person. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Um, right, um, so shall we begin our talk for today then? Okay, Ajahn Sumpong, uh, you can... Uh, I can leave. Say, yes, you can leave. Or you can <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can leave now because actually I'm doing the interview, you know, for new PhD students, I mean PhD candidates. Okay, for our ELT program. All right. Okay, thank you very much, Jasper Pong, for uh, right. taking mm. the time to okay. welcome all the audience from all over the world for today. Thank okay. you. Enjoy. Uh, yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay, ka. okay, so we're just going to wait for Jasper Pong to uh, leave the room first. So that we can gossip about him. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, it looks like a Jan Monton. Uh, there are two, two of you. Uh, two of you. Uh, I'm sorry. My okay. connection was like um, disconnected yeah. for a while. Like, okay. Sorry. But, okay. 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 Uh, I noticed that. But before we begin, I know I've noticed that some people. Um, uh asking about uh our access on youtube live so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to post the link to watch <laughs> us on youtube on our fan uh our, our fan page okay so that the information can be spread out so if you have any friends who would like to watch us okay you can also share the link and you can access the link on a facebook fan page of the language institute thomas Hart university okay so not to waste time time to get excited everyone okay uh, <laughs> to get excited <laughs> okay so, um what are we going to talk about today oh sorry about that okay so this is our agenda for today okay so we're going to talk about many interesting things how can we survive as elt you know lecturers professors teachers so we're going to talk about how to use settings in the online environment and also talking about the toolkit of the online toolkit okay that you can use for your teaching and of course okay 
last but not least, we're going to uh, spend some time for the Q&A, okay? Okay, so let's begin, okay, for the settings, okay? Settings, we have the first question. How do you set up your online class to look presentable, okay? And question number two, are there any live to tell mishaps that deserve sharing. So um, I think uh, Ajahn Panna, if you can begin. Okay. Well, okay. hi everyone, I'm Panna. Okay, I will well talk about um, setting up your online course. If you could see my screen right now, um, just a minute. Okay, well, first things first, we talk about online classes. The first time that we heard about this, the first thing that came into mind is that how are we going to set up an online class, right? Okay. Well, there's so many things to take into consideration. But the thing is, I think, well, at least you have to consider five topics right here. Okay. First of all, it's the lighting because now you are broadcasting at home or somewhere private, okay? You have to look visible. <laughs> so lighting plays a vital part, yeah? And then we're going to talk a bit about sound and audio used in our ELT um, online-wise, okay? Well, another topic would be our own appearance and gestures that we can use when we teach, right? Okay. And the last thing is what's in the back. Well, which play some part, okay, play some good role as well. All right. So let's slowly, slowly talk about the lights. <laughs> if you can see me now, well, I'm here. You can see me well. Face yourself. Well, face the light, okay, when you sit. Face the light. Try to set the light above you but behind the camera so if you're using your computer try to make sure that the light stays over the camera and behind the camera a bit okay that's the perfect place for the light and project the light down to your face right slightly down to your face so the focal point is here okay so I'll try to make make sure that the camera is at about the forehead level right here. Wait, right. don't stay too close to the camera because you would like your, your students and your audience to see at least one third of yourself maybe from the head like, like this, okay? We're going to talk about the proportion of how much you should occupy the screen in a moment, okay? So if you would like to see, well, there's some recommendations on YouTube clips. You can search for that. Uh, one of them that is interesting is the clip called How to Look Good. Um, let me see. Um, in front of the web, the webcam, I think. Yeah, okay. I put it here if you can just, well, slide. The boxes, I think there are boxes of panelists on the right hand side, right? You could move a bit, you could see um, the source here. There's some guy um, on YouTube who talk in detail about how to set up um, lighting system for online cars. Okay, well, here's me, I'm sacrificing myself. That is, I'm do I was doing the right thing here. I center myself. Okay, I'm um, at the center of the screen. But the thing is that my, well, setting on my house only allows me to sit behind a window. So there's a window here. The ideal is to avoid the window because that's where the natural light comes in, right? But if you can't, you have to sit behind or, well, not behind, but you have the window behind you, right? Okay, make sure that the room is bright, bright enough, brighter than, well, somewhere outside, okay? So what would you look like if it's too bright and on the back, at the back, you would look like me um, in the picture here. It's too much, it's distracting. Maybe your students feel okay 
uh, for about five minutes, 10 minutes, and then they will just avoid looking at you because it's too bright outside on my back, right at the back. Okay, I'm still sitting with the window behind me though, but I make sure that I have some good light, yeah, so that the room here is brighter. Well, that's an oops moment though. So take a look, there's something wrong with the setting here. Well, I'm being too close. I was too close to the, to the lens. Can you see that? So you can't see the top of my head, so avoid that. We wouldn't want to be too much too close to the students. Well, imagine ourselves in a normal classroom, you wouldn't be this close to the students, right? Okay, so try to make sure that they could see, well, some good proportion of your upper part, okay? And there's some glare behind me in the picture. Okay, well, if you don't mind, if it's not too bright, it's okay, but you can do better actually, right? Um, take a look at oops number two. This is, well, there was something wrong with the camera angle or the lens angle, right? It's below, it's too low right here. So can you see my double chin there? Okay, well, there's nothing wrong with having double chin, but if you want to look good, okay, try to make sure that the camera is here at about the forehead level there and the lighting here is not perfect it's um warm light but i would say that it's a bit too dark if you have to broadcast for 90 minutes or three hours then um it makes you students your students feel sleepy a bit yeah so you would want to make the whole room quite bright but not too bright okay right the next thing is the sound Okay. Most of the time, we use the sound system that comes with the video, um, the computer, sorry. Yeah, it works well only when there's no echo in the room. Well, if you, well, you have to record yourself. You rehearse yourself and you record it and take a look, have a look and just listen to yourself. If there's no echo in the room, it's good to go using the computer audio. Yeah, well... Well, for us, um, ELT teachers, you know, English language teachers, if you have to use some listening clips, make sure that your online program supports use of listening clips on the same computer, right? Zoom is okay. Well, Zoom, <clears throat> Zoom allows you to talk to your students and then um, just open some clips and have them listen at the same time. You can even talk to your students while the listening clip is being run, okay? But for some other online teaching program, you might find it difficult to have um, sounds from two sources, from you and from um, the clips to run, well, side by side though. So it's always um, good to rehearse and check. Okay. Well, the next thing, if you feel that, well, there's echo in my room, I, I can hear some echo and, well, the sound should be better than use the headphone with the microphone. That's also not too expensive, right? Some people invest um, in a microphone. It's okay. But for me, I would keep things free as long as possible. Oh, well, as long as I can. It's just because at the end of the day, I will have to buy something. I will have to pay for subscriptions. You know, I will have to spend some money. So, well, I try to use what I already have, right? Maybe it's a headphone with a mic. And when you use the headphone with the mic, it highlights your voice and it automatically reduces unwanted noise around you, okay? And notice if you yourself is the, are the source of unwanted noise. I have allergies, so I cough. I cough a lot, okay? So record yourself, rehearse yourself, have a look and listen. You might find yourself making some unwanted noise constantly. Do you fidget, you know, moving back and forth, you know? Or do you? 
are you noisy when you turn pages? Okay. Well, I think we have to be careful with something like this because we are close to the microphone and students are not going to tell you because they're just there at the end of the line, you know? Right, so be careful. Your appearance. Okay, so I think right now I'm in a good place. Well, I have read somewhere, well, several places that you should occupy at least a third of the screen, but no more than a half of the screen. Okay, well, here I have two, page, um, two pictures. There's nothing so wrong with the picture on the left-hand side, but the picture on the right-hand side looks, well, looks right. Well, let me tell you about the picture on the left-hand side. I tend to look at myself on screen or I look at my students. Do you do that? Well, well, we can't help it. We see ourselves on the screen, right? So we want to look at ourselves, right? But Little did you know, did I know that actually what students see is that I am looking down, I'm looking down and then I talk to somebody. Well, look at the lens people, look at the lens. Once in a while, it's the only way to make eye contact with your students, really. Right now I'm looking at the lens, right? And you could feel that I'm just looking at you, but once in a while, I'll just look down and read something. It's okay, but don't forget to look at the lens. Yeah, there, right there. Okay, avoid wearing shiny objects. Some people love accessories, but shiny objects tend to produce some disability glare, okay? You wouldn't want your students to feel dizzy or feel annoyed, okay? And try to make your upper part presentable, you know? This is, well, common practice anyway. But beware of what you look like waist, the waist down, you know? Because if you take a break and you do not um, stop the video or turn off the camera, you leave the room, you leave the chair, your students are going to see your, your trousers, yeah? Okay, so beware, all right? Okay, take a look here. When you are on camera, when you're on screen, um, cut down something that is, well, annoying, like hand gestures, you can use it, but you don't cover your face. Okay, you try to make sure that there's not too much going on over here, All right? Well, you have the background to help you, looks stable, okay? But on, well, that said, you can also use hand gestures, right, to help you communicate with your students. You, I don't think you want to say the same things, well, over and over, like, pardon, pardon, come again, come again. Great, great, okay, you know. You can just switch your um, expressions to some hand gestures, like, well, if someone is speaking, presenting, and they want you to reassure that, well, they're doing okay, okay. You say, all right, okay, okay, okay. If you want to compliment your students, you can just say, great, great. Or, all right, I don't want to disturb you, but hey, that's good, that's good. You can even use your hand to signify some number, of course, right? One, two, three, four, I need four, okay. Two more, two more, you see, right. Or another popular hand gesture like, pardon? Come again, come again, okay. Well, the fifth one is one that's, it's my personal habit for the fifth one. Can you see that? I'll, I'll do this when they're answering and they're not hitting the target. You're not answering it. Uh, you're not answering my question um, correctly. I would do, Maybe, maybe, well, it could be, not quite, but hey, okay. And the most, well, popular hand gesture, right? Okay. I don't think students love hearing you uh, saying, quiet, please, please, please be quiet. So just, yeah, 
that that should work. Okay. Well, anyone, anyone here on the panel using some different gestures, people? Do we have anything at all? Well, we can talk about it later for hand gestures. Okay. Um, well, you might want to just um, highlight some of the facial expressions. No, I find myself winking <laughs> more often when I teach online, like, okay. yeah, something like that. Okay, now take a look at the background, okay. Well, first and foremost, if you're, well, if you never broadcast yourself, the best thing to do is to make the background simple. Right, and you highlight yourself here, right? Okay, well, I think it, it's something to do with color combination. You are uh, right here um, in my black t-shirt. Okay, I love black t-shirts anyway. Yeah. So I would try to make sure that um, I am not sinking into the background, right? So the background, light shade, the light shade works, okay. It complements your appearance. Yeah? And try to make sure that the background pleases the eye. Okay. Nothing too much. Yeah, you can use a picture. Well, I think the most um, famous picture is the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, that works. Okay. But make sure that there's not nothing going on behind you. Like the other day, I have my nephew walking, walking, walking. And then he walked past me. I think some of my students lost me because they're looking at my nephew, you see. <laughs> that happens. Okay. Well, I think, um, well, one of the tips that Green Guy would help me out is that you can use the green screen, right? Yeah. Just to make yourself stand out. Okay. Hi, Green Guy. Hi, Champanna. Thank you. Yeah, would you like to um, tell us more about the green screen? Sure, of course. Okay. Just hand it over me. Okay. Thank you very much, Sampana, and uh, hello everyone from Bangkok, Thailand. And my name is Kian Krai, and you can call me at an O for short. All right. Before I move on to sharing about my, my green screen, um, some of you may not be familiar with the Zoom applications when we share the screen, then when we share the screen, you can actually change the speaker view. Okay, so you can view just um, our speaker, right? The, uh, at, at the moment, like who who's, who is speaking, right there. And then also you can swap the um, the screen to see only the PowerPoint presentation. And also you, if you don't want to see our present uh, PowerPoint presentation or you want to see our face, then you can swap to just you know listen to us. Okay, so. Um, all right, let, 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 me, uh, let me share the screen, what I did um, to set up the green screen because uh, my computer doesn't fit all like Mac, okay? So this is the, one of the problems that I found. Um, some, of my some of my friends also uh, faces this uh, technical problem as well because um, there are different types of computer, notebook, right? Laptop or whatever. So, and I am not a Mac person that uh, the Mac person already the, has a built-in, you know, like built-in um, uh, features that you can, you can, you know, choose a virtual background already. So I had to set up, set up some kind of green screen because um, the, my computer is quite old per se. Um, so I need to set up this, the screen. Okay. So let me, let me share what I did here. It's very easy and you don't need to, um, you don't need to, you know, um, spend a lot of money to set up the green screen and, and um, it's quite easy. Okay, so let's see. Here is, here is in my room, um, you know, teaching from home. So I, I actually brought, uh, brought this, this is the um, in Thai we call figure board or the presentation board, right? So you can find this, um, a board, the green, the green board quite easily at the stationery um, or the bookstore. Okay, so it, in Thai, it costs about a 30 baht each. 
So I need I need just you know four pieces of of a board and then uh, just put it in the back of my um, you know the stations that I would like to um, would like to um, set up when I teach. Okay, and then you can see you can see um, here is the um, computer the computer setting and also I have the comb here like Ajahn Panna said you need you need some kind of lighting okay to 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 bright up your your face. Okay, so you don't need to be in the dark, right? When you teach a student, and also you can see the like, all the mess, uh, all the mess around. So you, I need a book. Okay, I need uh, my my um, stationery, like pens and pencil to jot it down. All right. So here is come the the actual the actual pictures when I teach. Okay, so you can see that. Um, this is one of the themes that I will talk about later on when when we when we teach how to engage the student. Um, when uh, when we you know just want the student to show up their faces, okay, and uh, just one warning though, this is not the the uh, good position to sit down because you you might get you know a backache. No, um, but but there, um, I just want to you know um, sit sit up and then trying trying to make it easy, and then you can see that right next to the um, the station that I teach is like my bedroom so after i teach then you can just you will jump on the bed to relax a little bit all right so this is um the easy way to set up the screen and then once that you have the, the green screen for for us uh, specifically for the zoom applications then you can just you know shoot any virtual you know you choose any virtuals that you like for example uh, for example for example here um now I am in the in the classroom, right? Now I am in the classroom. So once that you have the green screen, then you can you can ch choose your virtual background. For example, like you want to be in, you I miss Korea so much. Then I can I can go to you know Korea, right? The Bantan, the Itaewon classes. Then the student will you know can kind of engage you. Okay, oh Ashan, you 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 been to this place already? Something like that, you know. So so it's one one of the thing that you can do to set up the background. And you know you can if you miss if you miss the um your your workplace so much and you can have this kind of you know um background at the back okay like the language institute building all right so here uh, here is my you know my solution to set up the the background for my um you know for from my teaching all right so back to you Ajahn Kim Siri for the next question. Okay, so thank you very much, Ajahn Sai and Ajahn O oh, for, you know, sharing so many thoughts. Actually, uh, I'm just looking at the uh, chat box right now. So we have uh, so many people all over the world who have come to join us, people from, um, I think, Korea, Indonesia, and also, of course, you know, many parts of the world. Uh, so thank you again one more time for joining us. And um, the next one we're going to talk about is about the online toolkit. Uh, sorry, somebody said um, you can't see my PowerPoint slides. Can you? Uh, Can you see my PowerPoint slides? I, I, I actually could see your PowerPoint slide and I, I saw Ajahn O's PowerPoint slide as well. So if you have any questions or any issues about um, um, about, you know, this is our first time, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> issues but we know that already you know as online teachers social distancing teachers this is what we have to deal with okay so yes again one more time if you have any questions just you know uh send me the message on the inbox okay so nata has just said that she can see a john panas powerpoint slide so thank you very much um uh, nata and also a john sudanaha okay thank you very much okay right uh so the next uh part of our webinar of our talk would be uh we'll be moving on to the next one which is the online toolkit okay so what i'm gonna do is just i'm, I'm just gonna share this okay so ajan oh can you see that yes. yes okay um so we talked about settings already okay uh and we learned about uh, so many great ideas okay um 
somebody sent me a, a message on, in the chat box saying that, oh, it's great that we can just teach and relax in our beds. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's many of us some good ideas now okay so the next part will be about the online toolkit okay so online toolkit sorry online toolkit question number one what are useful uh you know toolkit for class meeting and number two what are the practical things practical tools that we can use for teaching so uh for this one who, will it be you uh, Jan O, or would Ajanet, Cap, Ajanet, Ajanet first, yeah. Be, uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing right now so that Ajanet, Ajan Sichon Naha can um, share with us uh, lots of good tools and good thoughts. Ajan, by the way, Ajanet is one of our IT experts from the two. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to stop sharing right now. Okay, ha, Ajanet, ha. Okay, thank you. So, so the, um, hello again, everyone. I am Ajahn Sichon Naka or Ajahn Nat. Um, first, let me respond to some of the comments. Some of you said that you can see the PowerPoint just fine, but for some users, they might not know how to switch. So if you look at the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you will see the, the tab called Speaker View. So if you click one more time, it will go to like Gallery View. Right, so for the gallery view, you will see um, uh, panelists on the top uh, of the screen. And then when somebody share their screen, the screen will go larger down at the bottom. So there are many ways you can actually adjust the layout of the Zoom. So when I'm, I'm sharing the screen, you can kind of like click around and see what works for you. All right, but there are many tabs, many features here and there hiding at the corners of the screen. So feel free to play along, you know, play around and, and, and just adjust it the way you want. Okay, now let me share. So um, the part of my talk would be what platforms should we use? Because since, well, in, uh, in case of Thammasat, the university has announced that we will close since like mid-March, right? And at that point, I believe that no one really know what to do. And I, we're not, we are not really familiar with a lot of like meeting platforms at that time. Right, so my, let me share my screen first. And I'm going to also ask you guys, like what, what platforms are you using right now? If you, if you already had taught online, right? So I would love to know some of your comments from you know, people around the world, but um, I have gathered some of, I believe uh, the most popular choices among Thai teachers, let's say. Okay, so let me, um, enlarge it a little bit more. Let's do, I don't know, 75 maybe, and let's share it. Ah, um, so I have so five of the platforms that are quite popular among Thai teachers, I would say, would be Zoom, uh, which is what we are using right now. We have Google Meet, that is another popular tool, um, Microsoft Team, Facebook Live, and Line. Right. Um, so actually, I would say that at the time, like I said, at the time when you didn't really know what to do and then you just you got thrown into this bin of like social distancing and um, distance learning. Um, I believe that most of the teachers resort to what they are familiar with. Right. What they the tools that they are familiar with, they know how to use or that they already have the application on their phone or on, on their computer. So I would say Facebook Live and Lie could be like the two popular choices um, for teachers who are a beginner, who are not tech savvy, let's say. Right? Um, and there are a lot of um, advantages, a lot of good things that coming from Facebook and Lie. Um, one thing would be uh, that it is, well, for Facebook Live, I actually talked to one of the teachers who really love using Facebook Live because she said it's the easiest one, of course, but um, just keep in mind that you have to first um, establish the group, right? The private group with your students first, otherwise your, all of your live sessions will be up on your personal profile and you, know, you may not want to do that, 
So once she set up the, the private group with her students, she can always do Facebook Live. It's easy, right? And the participants, you can see that I compare like the maximum numbers of participants, meeting length, whether they allow you to record the sessions or not, whether you can share the screen and also other interesting features. Um, so you can see that if you live on Facebook or even online, uh, via live application, you can do it with a lot of people, like a very large number of people. So one thing, well, there are many factors to think about. Um, but if you really have to uh, do a lecture with a very large class, maybe the live um, option would be for you. Right? Because like I said, you have unlimited participants and you also have unlimited unlimited length of time that you can live or you can teach. Um, but again, I think the primary question would be what your institute provide for you, right? Because like Ajahn Panna has already said that we just want to, at the end, eventually we will have to pay for something. But the, at the first resort, we will try to find, uh, we'll do our best to find the free options, right? What free options or free versions are available to us? So this is what uh, my, the, my comparison of these five tools are based on the free plans only, of course, for Zoom, Google Meet and Microsoft Team, if you pay extra, for their monthly or annual plan, you will get a lot more features. But again, this is only for their free plans, right? Um, so for Facebook Live and Live, they are always free. That is why there are some limitations of what they can or cannot do, right? Um, so for, again, uh, let me go back. Um, I just said that one, one main question would be what your institute provide for you. Most, for example, um, for Thammasat University, we, I think the university kind of like encourage us to use Microsoft Team, I believe. Um, we have already had the at the, uh, .tu .ac .eth account, which link directly to Microsoft 365 um, plan. So we can actually use Microsoft Team for free. And we have a lot of like good um, features that we can use there. Just like one of the participants, uh, he also said that um, he used, uh, maybe it sounds like Microsoft Team has many benefits. Exactly. But just, um, and Microsoft Team in itself, if you look down here, um, it is not only an online like meeting platforms, it's actually uh, everything it is also a classroom management so you can imagine microsoft team as a uh, just like google classroom plus google meet right so there are many things actually that you can do on the single platform but let's say that i am not um actually an expert i have never used microsoft team myself and that is the point another point that i'm going to talk about um even though your institute provide you with some tools, but if you are not familiar with it, you don't know what it is, what is it benefit, maybe you don't want to use it. Um, on the other hand, there are some tools that I am more familiar with. I know about it more and that is Google Meet because I've already did uh, already use like Google Classroom and Google Forms and everything, every products from <laughs> Google actually have um, use, it, uh, use them before. So that would be kind of like more of my, um, uh, my preference to what's the tool that I would like to use. Um, and exactly, yes, again, let me, sorry, I, I'm going back and forth between um, my talk and also some of the comments, because right now, one, another tool that some of you may use or some of you may have heard would be WebEx, WebEx Cisco. Um, I have seen a lot of Thai teachers started using it. I've heard that you can have up to 25 participants um, in one class for free. Correct me if I'm wrong. And also, I believe that this is the kind of like the platform by a Thai company or it's not. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I mean, um, some of uh, it's, it's gaining more popularity. I mean, for, for WebEx. Uh, and also, so where was I? 
นะคะ uh, things like that so there again there are so many platforms out there to choose from but I would say that the best way to do it is to one choose the tools that you are that you feel comfortable the most comfortable using and also you can choose the tools that if you are not so good at technology ask someone ask your friends what they use and uh, and use whatever they are using because if you have some problems you, if you need help with any technical issues you can always ask your colleagues or your friends to help you um, solving those problems right but apart from that um you can you also have to think about the 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 format of your teaching right that your, your the format of your classroom whether it is only like peer lecture if it is just peer lecture without a lot of participation um yeah participations from between you and your students maybe facebook live will do right one of my teach uh, one of my colleagues who are constantly using facebook said that she likes it because she doesn't have to get a lot of like distractions or interruptions from the students you know she can just say what she has to say and then um, ask students to do some kind of exercise or you know worksheets um, to test whether they understand her or not right but on the other hand if you really want some um, feedback some participation from your students maybe you have to choose um, some of the platform that allow you to do that and maybe you really have to kind of like pay for it right um, so let me talk about that um, i would say for now the it is very competitive right now in the market as you know um, all of the tools try to upgrade their features and their tools to do everything that they could so that they can gain more um, customers right but for Google Meet, uh, usually for just any free account, you don't have to have G Suite for education. Um, you can uh, have a meeting with up to 100 participants uh, for one hour. However, right now they are kind of like extend, like expand um, this feature to up to 24 hours. So you can, for one meeting, you can have a one day meeting. You can meet with uh, students or with someone for an entire day for 24 hours. And that would be through September 30th. Um, and then after that, I don't know if they're going to extend it again or you know, probably you have to pay for it to, to have a longer meeting time, right? But, for, but, but then for Zoom, you, if you are using Zoom, you might have known that you can do it for only 40 minutes and it will cut off and you have to start over again. Again, if you want to have a continuous meeting without interruption, you have to pay for like probably $15 uh, monthly right, for the annual plan. Um, and then for the recording, if it is a free plan, no, you cannot really record your um, lecture. So I would say this is one of the, another thing to think about, right? If you really want to, um, if you want to, if you want your lectures or your classroom sessions to be able uh, to be able to play back, if you want your teachers to go back at it at any time, maybe Facebook Live will be the answers for you because they can do that automatically, right? Once you did, once you're done with the live streaming, they will kind of like pop up on your Facebook or something like that, right? For other things, for other tools, you will have to, to pay for it. Um, screen sharing, yes, I think all of the platforms are like upping their game and they, they try to um, let you be able to share your screens. However, you have to kind of see as well for line, you can share your entire screen only. You cannot really do just um, particular window on your screen. So maybe your students will see everything that is there on your computer, for example, if you are worried about that you might have to choose the different um, tool as well. Um, and then let's go to the last one, other interesting features. This is, um, I think the most, um, I think it will be like a, the, the, the main reason why we're going to choose to stick to one particular tool because they can do something that other tools cannot provide. And I, I think that is true to me and most of our teachers as well. And that is because, well, we are teaching language, right? So we always need some kind of like interaction 
from our students. We want them to interact not only with us, but sometimes it is a lot. It's helpful to help to have them like interact with one another in a small group. We want them to do group work, but right now we cannot, right? Because we are always online. If we let them do the work on their own at home, we don't know. Um, how they do it, whether they do it or not, or you know things like that. And of course, they're going to talk to each other in Thai. If you and you know ask them to do it outside in, in their own in the first language, so um, there are some interesting features from Zoom, for example, that it is quite useful for us, and that is why most of us at Language Institute are willing to pay um, fifteen dollars a month in order to get a thing called breakout room. Um, which Ajahn, Ajahn Green Guy will talk about that later. Um, so the, my, the, my last thing would be for Google Meet, for example, you cannot really do breakout group. You cannot break out students into small groups and do group work. But what is great for Google Meet, I think, would be that it is very easy to use. Even though your uh, your students or yourself have never used this program before, you don't need to download anything. You don't have to set up anything. You know, your students just click the link, and they will just go on to that Google Meet meeting, right on their browser, right. Uh, in comparison to Google Team or Microsoft Team or Zoom, you know, they need to have that application first in order to be able to join the class and stuff like that. Um, so that is something that you have to think about as well, right? Um, uh, and somebody said to me that the free version of Zoom does allow the recording of the session by the host. Okay, that is good to know, right? Um, so yes, probably. So I would say that for for recording Zoom, yes, no? Like I said, I'm not sure that I know everything, right? So thank you so much for correcting me, right? Um, so right now, let's talk about this one. Like I said, that there are some of the interesting things that you can do to kind of like engage your students more. Because as you know, when we do things online, we don't really see whether your students are <laughs> behind the camera or not. What are they doing? Are they just having lunch or run to the bathroom and never come back? You know, so um, I will pass the mic to Ajahn Green Guy and hopefully he will, he will talk more about breakout room and some of the activities that they can do to engage your students more. Thank you, Kai Ha. All right. Thank you, Ajahn Ness, for uh, introducing that, um, um, you know, quite, quite well um, fit. Um, famous topic that we, we need to talk about when, you, when we teach online, right? And could you stop sharing the screen, please? And I will... Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> thank you. So basically, one of the problems that we have when, when we teach online is about to review, you know, ourselves and especially the students that sometimes they just want to lie on their beds and then they just don't want to show their faces like they haven't taken a shower yet. And, you know, they just that they have to wake up in the in the early morning to uh, to you know to enroll the class the, uh, the class and then so um, I have some ideas to share to engage everyone uh, every students of yours to you know kind of show up their faces and then do some activity all right so let me share my my screen here and um, here are the three um, the three topics that I would like to cover to you know kind of uh, engage your student online and specifically I, I will talk about Zoom because um, I use the Zoom platform ma uh, mainly and then I I'll, I'll, um, I think it's quite beneficial for for me to you know to teach uh, stu my students and also to enhance this, um, I, I I think it's cover all skills that we need to you know like uh, our both productive and uh, receptive skills, okay? And the first one, I will talk about the using break rooms on Zoom platform, okay, that Ajahn Nat has uh, mentioned earlier. And then the second one is, I'll, I'm gonna talk about the using view of names. So this one of the, this is the, one of the websites that we can use to, you know, kind of engage and engage students and get some excitement a little bit, you know, like let, let the students um, um, feel, feeling excited when they, when they study. 
And then the last thing that I'm going to share is about to setting up the themes for each class meeting. All right. So let's talk about the first um, the first issue the using the, the Zoom platform. OK, so uh, if you can see on the screen, um, you can see that uh, um, right here there there is the break rooms. OK, break rooms um, for for Zoom. OK, that you can use to actually engage your students. All right. So. Um, first of all, I would like to I would like to talk about this one. Okay, this is the um, um, the one that I actually used uh, the break room for teaching writing. Okay, but this for this one actually um, I use it with the Google uh, Google Google um, uh, G Suite. Let's say C Suite, and then I use the Google Doc because when once that you used um, um, break room for writing that you need you need another platform for a student you know to actually um, try um, writing and then you can teach you know by having a student um, you know type it in and then you can have the corrective feedback right away okay after you uh, after you um, teach and then the student can practice either in a group or individually all right so this is the first first one okay I used the uh, 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 break rooms in uh, on Zoom platform for teaching writing, and the sec and and here here is the examples of the video I use actually for uh, for using the um, the break rooms. So let's just um, let me stop sharing a little bit, and then let me see. I have to share my uh, computer sounds, otherwise you are not going to hear uh, you're not going to hear the video sound. Okay. Here. Long discuss can do now. Long discuss can do a little now. And then we'll be hot with all that. Maybe function perm in each other. And even tell me perm law. Hi. What can you infer about the cost of premium water? Hmm. Oh, da. เงินเหรอเอาอะไรลูกเอาคุยคุยกันต่อดิครูกําลังฟังอยู่เลยอ่ะหนูคิดว่าหนูเลยหนูคิดว่าคําว่าฟรีฟรีฟรีเมียมใ
using 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 the uh, wheel of names to just calling up uh, calling the students name to answer some of the questions that you know after discussions and you want to hear some some of the student thinking some of their thoughts what what are they right about the topic that we uh they, they have been discussed earlier in the break room so um here here is the the things like okay this is the website called the view of names and I think it's one of the extension from from Google okay and then it's um, you can you can use this one um, you know for many classes you can see that you can create new okay also you can uh, save to to use it later on right for this one and then here is how the To split to spin the name, all right. And once it stop, then you can have you know you can you can have the name of the students and then you can call them out. Okay. So yeah, here here's one thing that you can do to engage your student, like you and and you will, you will see that whether they are still there with you or not. Okay. So um this is the one thing and then let's see let's see the real the real the real class when i use this one okay let's see the video here ครูจะสปินวิวนะลูกนะครับได้ได้ชื่อใครนะจ๊ะคนนั้นจะมาบอกเราพารากราฟให้ให้เพื่อนๆฟังว่าพารากราฟพารากราฟที่แต่ละพ
Uh, I think uh, Ajahn O is now disconnected a bit. Okay, so. Okay. Are you Sorry, the. Um, okay, I think the internet connection is not stable. Are you here? Uh, do you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'll I'll share you. Um, where 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 did we? Where did where did where were I? <laughs> I'm sorry. Where were I? <laughs> and, you know, I just kept talking because I have the like, limited time. So um, talking about themes, right? Talking about themes. Yeah, floral shirts. A floral <laughs> shirt. Okay. Thank you, Zanette. Okay. So the um then the next the next one is about the um the pajama, right? Pajama party. Since the student always on their bed, right? So they just come up with the idea that, okay, John, let's just do the pajama. You know, just, just wear the pajamas and then here is calm, right? The result is that you, you can see this, all the students, you know, have, um, you know, lie on that. Some of them lie on their base. Some of them has a different background, like the, um, the, their, their dream bed, bedrooms, okay? And then you can see me, right, on the, on the top, the second one on the top that, you know, I even have the powder on my face and also all the, you know, all the students are happy with this. So this one is just a, a small thing that you can actually engage as a student, okay, when, when you, um, when you teach online, all right. So here are, are the, the three, three ideas that I would like to share to engage the students. I I yes. Sorry to interrupt, but there's one question from um, the participant asking whether you can save the names on your, uh, sorry, sorry, the, the wheels of names. Can you save the list yes. name? Yes, yes, time? yes. You can, you can save the, the list names so that you don't, you don't need to type it again next time when you want to, when you want to use it. And then you can add another name, uh, another student's names in different classes as well. Okay. So, for example, let, let me let me show I what I what I have on my um on my uh, wheels of names here. Let me move the bar. Okay. See, um, I have um, you, they will be open, right? Open menu on top. Okay. Cancel first. There will be open menu on top, and here are the you know the list that you that that I have saved. I so I have taught five classes last semesters and these are all the lists that you you that you know when I, next time that you have a class and then you can just you know pop pop um open this one for example like uh, i would like the tu 105 student so it's come up here okay or you can just chain i would like to okay now i have um e er 202 the name is just there right okay all right, thank you very much for um, questions. And this is, I think this is quite, you know, easy and, and kind of engaged students. So back back to you, Kapachan Pim Siri, then we'll move on to the next um, next issues that we have. Let me stop sharing first. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much um, for the online toolkit, right? Um, so we have, sorry, let me just, uh, share my screen very very quickly okay so can you see my screen now yes okay excellent okay so uh so like i said before for the today agenda yeah we talked about settings we talked about uh, online toolkit uh we talked about these two questions what are the useful toolkit for class meetings and of course the practical tools for for teaching okay so um before we move on to the next one it looks like on my um in in the powerpoint presentation i have the next slide would be q and a right but before we move to q and a um does anybody here would like to add anything to um the ideas of online toolkit actually has Quite a few things to say, right? Right. Okay. okay. Um, right. okay. So I'll pass it on to you, Ajahn Monton. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll pass it on to you. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Um, on my on my way of doing, I would love to use the available resources online, um, which are like YouTube, Kahoot, 
or even like quizzes. Right, I think Ajahn Nat can add to that as well. Um, uh, basically, if you go to like, um, for example, if you go to kahoot.com, there are available uh, resources right there. Oh, let me check. Right, um, the only thing is like, you can search for any, any um, available resources uh, to engage with your students. Uh, the, the, the thing is easy, right? The thing is easy. Like, uh, for example, if you just go to play and then um, get the student to enter the, the pin, and then they can just start doing any, any activity at all, right? Um, let me look in. Um, Here we go. Right, for example, if you have like activities, this is my own activity. Like um, I'm, I was teaching airline industry and I asked the student to just participate in the quizzes like this. Like uh, what is the category of this aircraft like that? And the student have to choose from the choices and they, um, they can have fun playing this kind of activity um, at the same time of learning your lesson. So if you can actually transfer your your content onto the um, Kahoot play game, there will be like um, an engagement of the students on, on, on Kahoot, right? And how, how do I integrate all this together in my lessons then? Right, let me start sharing um, something fun, okay? I, I don't know if it's fun, but I, I think it's fun, right? Okay. Um, here we go. Uh, one of the activities that I use is to use YouTube to engage all the students, right? Uh, as you know, on YouTube, there are available resources right there, right? And right now I'm going to use YouTube for listening practice, YouTube for writing and speaking practice, and um, YouTube for grammar practice as well. Right, let's see the first activity, um, listening practice. In the listening practice, uh, I don't know whether you know that on YouTube, there is a function called subtitles. Um, you, might, you might argue that when we talk about YouTube, they're all like, authentic, it's so fast, it's so natural, and the students might not be able to catch up or the listenings or, or the video at all. So the best thing is to just turn on the subtitles and let the students watch as many times as they want, uh, but, in order to just watch a YouTube and just let the student watch it, I think it's better to, to ground the student through activities. Like for example, pre-listening tasks to, to get the student to think. For example, in this, in this listening, why I love my job as an ally pilot. So um, I, might, I, I might just start with a question like, what's your dream airline job like? What is it like to work as an airline? And what, what do you think are good qualifications of the airline staff? And let's just discuss. Uh, the discussion online can be on the Google Classroom, where the student just post their ideas onto the Google, uh, onto Google, Google Classroom panels. And then I'll, po I'll, I'll show this YouTube with the subtitle, as you can see. Right, and then after listening, the student would have to think of the, to, to summarize the story and at the same time, add up, add on from the listening, like what, in what way can the qualification pilots help you improve service operations in the future, for example. Um, I think this, this kind of authentic listening works for both um, young learner and adult learner. So I think um, if you can choose appropriate um, level of, of um, YouTube channels, I think um, the students can engage with the listening um, authentically authentically, right? Um, and this is kind of the practice in the classroom I use a lot. Uh, I try not to use course book listening. I try to use YouTube all the time for the student to practice authentic listening through this kind of activity, which is easy to do, right? But if you want to look for listening as an assessment, that's a way to do as well. Uh, this is an activity that I, I did and it works so well, right? The students, um, enjoy the most, like um, that I asked the student to do the three um, listening portfolios 
right, three tasks, three, three, three week project, one video clip a week, and then the students um, enjoy watching and at the same time, sharing the experience uh, through listening at, uh, all the time. Uh, the task for the teacher to do is to, to look for a video clip on YouTube, maybe a short clip of approximately like three minutes to five minutes, not more than that, because the attention of the student will be very low. And then the teacher may need to work a little bit harder that they need to design a worksheet, maybe listening worksheet, true, false questions or the short answer questions um, for the student to, to do on, on, the, on their own time. And then the assessment can be in a different form. Like the student will have to like summarize the listening and add on what they think about it. Or if they were uh, uh, one of the character, how would, how would they say or react differently like that? So, and this is an example of what I did. Like I chose uh, um, a short clip um, where, where people are, were talking on YouTube and then I designed a true false questions like that. Then I asked the student to enjoy watching um, the video clip on their own time and then do the tasks on their own. And then they have to come up with a summary of, uh, the summary should be very short, like uh, 50 words summary and a personal reflection. If there were an, a, a, a character in one of the three characters right there, how would they just simply write their reflection on that? I mean, how would they say differently? How would they react differently like that? So this is kind of the, the engagement that students can, can use YouTube or to save your time, not to create your own um, YouTube material, but to use available YouTube right there for your listening portfolio, right? Um, can I ask, like, can you share with us, like from this activity, do you think it works? Do you think it works or not? Um, or uh, do you think you need to change a bit or adapt to your context at all? Any idea? Any idea? Uh, can you share any, any, do you have any idea for that? Maybe. Sorry, sorry, sorry to, to interrupt Jai Monton, but maybe um, some of the attendees might not know that they, they can actually raise their hands and ask questions. Right, you can actually raise your hand and ask questions as well, or you may simply write, write out. Oh, um, um, right on the chat box as well. Um, we have everyone to read it. Um, the principle behind this is that um, we have authentic material for authentic listening, right? And during this COVID time, it's so good to get the student back to what they like the most, that is due to. And this can create the digital portfolio for your assessment. And at the same time, you can actually help the students develop their personalized learning in a control way. I think this is a control one because you design your own video clip and at the, at the same time, the student work on it. But, um, um, but the thing is, this is just for listening, right? Okay, there's um, some questions. Um, uh, how to change the clarification of the clip you are playing with? During lecture, I received what, some online seminars that has many technical problems. Uh, oh, okay, to choose your video clip is up to it's up to the level of your students. Like there are so many clips available right there. Uh, one of the clips that I showed to you earlier was um, the, the the job of the of the pilots, right? I think that that might motivate the students. I think um, this is this is an ESP course actually, right? Um, right, I, I, I know there are so many advertisements, but I think it's nicer to get the student to see the reality of life right there. Uh, the, 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 the advertisement is fine enough, right, to, to interrupt the student, but um, the thing is the student will have to engage on different parts of the listening, right? If you can design the questions appropriate for certain uh, period of time of the students to listen to, uh, I think uh, it's, it's good enough for the student to engage with the listening, right? This is the first uh, listening practice, but I, I have some, some fun, some more fun activity, right? Right, um, right you, can, you can play play around with the speed as well. You can lower, lower the speed. You can fast, fasten the speed as well. Uh, this is a listening portfolio. I think it's kind of boring bit, but um, I have more engaging tasks right there. 
that is the um, writing and speaking activity for the um, reading and, 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 and listening on YouTube. Right now, uh, I, I go on to the task of movie review. So I chose one movie review from YouTube and asked the student to, um, to watch. Um, I mean, you can choose any, any movie at all, any, any series, any movie the student like, or any cartoon the student love to watch and, um, and, and find a review on that, on, that on, on, on the YouTube. And then get the student to watch and give them some small, easy to do tasks, for example, uh, note down as many adjectives as possible, or note down any nouns as much as possible, like that, so that the student, can, the student can listen and engage with the listening at the same time. After that, it's the work of the teacher again. The teacher may need to design his, uh, um, his or her own um, book review, I mean, I, I mean movie review, uh, with this sample writing, I, I did prepare uh, uh, the written talk, I mean, the, the, the written version of the movie review right there and gave it to the student. Uh, the task of students is to compare the YouTube review and the written review and to see the different linguistic features, different moves, different um, uh, vocabulary use, like in, in these two different tasks. And then what the students have to do is they have to choose their own movie or series or any cartoons and then write a review on their own. And at the same time, the following week, they can have some feedback of the, of the, re, of the written review and then they prepare their own video clip to present. Right, I think it's a, bit, it's a bit challenging for the students, but I think the challenging task is the base to get the student to engage with your, with your activities. Because if you just simply like throw the YouTube um, to your students, they might not be able to do any activity at all, or they just simply like ignore it or don't do any work. But if, they, if you give the students to, to do like, um, whether it's listening activities or the listening and writing engagement, I mean, listening and reading, engagement, um, they can actually um, engage more of the tasks that you are doing, right? And uh, this is an example that the students have made for me, like um, the student watched uh, the, 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 the cartoon Klaus and then she wrote a story, uh, the, the book review and then she prepared a movie review uh, for me and she got very good mark, right? In order to engage a little bit more on that, um, uh, engage more, I use Google Classroom again to post all the video clips of all the students in our class. It's a kind of the close, but public, but close, uh, so that the student will come to watch all the video clips and then they have to vote which one they love the most and give the comments why they love this video clip. And I think this is a kind of um, um, peer assessment and alternative assessment where the students can do the work and appreciate um, what they what what works or what doesn't work or how to improve their own um, their own tasks better through um, YouTube engagement like that. So I think by doing this, there are some principles as well. Right, right. Oh, that there's uh, there's a question as well. Like some teachers sometimes ask the students to recommend the video clip. That is nice as well. That is not, I, I did that as well, because on certain, on certain time of the day, when the, when the, when the, when the lecture is so boring, uh, I think it's better to get the student to recommend some video clips and then we watch together and, and do some activities. Right, for the, um, for the activity that I mentioned for the book review or, or the movie review or the series review, um, there's some principles behind that. Right, first of all, uh, we don't actually practice listening alone, but we, we encourage the combination of listening and reading engagement, writing and speaking engagement, and provide some personalized learning and alternative assessment as peer review. And I think I need to add one more thing to it that is um, 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 fun. That is fun because when the students uh, can choose what they want to do and they can work on what they, what, what they can do, I think it motivates the students as well, right, for that. Um, so um, this is kind of the, the, the basic principle for online. Um, so for young learner, I think these tasks are difficult, but the easiest thing is um, maybe you choose a cartoon, a very short 
cartoon clip and then get the student to watch and ask them to say a bit of character, which character they love the most and why, like that. Or if, if they have any situations, you, you can provide some situations where the student can imagine their own reaction to the situation. I think that that can create some kind of the critical thinking for the students as well, right? The last one, which is a kind of the boring thing, if you teach grandma online, how would that be? That would be very boring, isn't it? Right, so I have some, some engaging activity where I combine everything in, in the grammar exercise. First of all, I don't, I don't like teaching grammar, as you know. Um, right, so I, I get the student to do the quiz, right? The first task is like, I, I provide the student with the, with, the, with the link. You can see the QR code right there. And the student can just visit the, 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 the website. This website is a kind of the online assessment, I mean, online test on certain grammatical aspects. Let the student predict their own, like do the task on their own because the students are grown up enough to enjoy their, their life and doing their work. So let them do the exercise on their own. And then you can come up with a discussion, like which form do you use for predictions? Which form do you use for, um, for, for, for arrangements, for example? And then get the student to engage, to think about it through online tasks, online resources available right there. And then you can select another YouTube and I would recommend our BBC Learning English YouTube. This BBC Learning English YouTube is a very, very famous YouTube where you can have a variety of themes, variety of um, not only like grammar, but um, reading, writing, or even the story, write, story reading, storytelling as well, or, or spelling bee. So you can choose one um, grammar point to get the student to watch and then summarize to interact again and then use Kahoot to play, right? Uh, can you believe that this is done online? And the response from the student is that uh, they love the activity so much, especially when they watch the YouTube and then they play Kahoot again. That, that, that means the student practice the, the grammar internally without teachers teaching anything at all. And I think this is a role that YouTube has played uh, for grammar learning instead of like you just show the PowerPoint and explain grammar points point by point and then get the student to practice. I think that is not really likely for the student to engage for online learning at all, right? I think playing Kahoot is the best thing, right? Um, what principles are used in here? You might see that I use a lot of activities to repeat the grammar points, to repeat the things um, that the student will have to do at the same time, all the time, right? Um, so the principles that I use are motivational learning, right? What, what does it mean by motivational learning? Um, because when you, when you explain grammar, the student doesn't like, the student would, would feel like, well, it's just not likely, right? Uh, again, grammar again. So I think shifting the grammar through video clip, shifting the grammar to game playing, or just even like um, online exercises, I think they can, they can um, reinforce the grammar point more. And also when you repeat activity more often through uh, games to uh, the website online or through Kahoot, um, I think it is a kind of selective attention for students to engage with the tasks all the time. And believe it or not, repetition makes perfect for the long-term memory. I think that's, um, that's what I can say of how to use available authentic materials, uh, especially YouTube or Kahoot or online materials for, for your engagement um, in the classroom. All right. And, I, and now I would love to um, hand the, the microphone to, uh, um, to, to Ajahn Nat and Ajahn Pim, Pim Suri, right? Okay, so thank you very 
much again one more time Ajahn Monton okay we have learned a lot about how to use YouTube and don't forget okay for some of you who have friends and have not registered for this webinar you can you know tell them to watch us live right now uh, on our YouTube channel Language Institute Thomas University okay all right okay so before we move on to the next stage of q and I think we have some more to share right in terms of online toolkit. Anything else that you would like to add? Ajahn Mot, Ajahn Nat, Ajahn Sai, and Ajahn O. Is there anything else you would like to add? Um, maybe, I, I think some people are using um, a tablet, a, a tablet or iPad, so to speak, to um, teach online. Um, I think I might have two interesting apps that you would like to try on. Okay, let me share it to you. It's not a teaching app. It's um, teaching preparation apps. Okay, each one of them. So let me try this. Uh, just a moment. I have to. That is great. Thank you very much. Just a moment, please. Well, if you try on your teaching through iPad, okay, it's coming up. Just a moment, please. So you have it connected with um, your pad. Can you see me, my pad? I think you can. Okay. Yeah. Well, that at least there's so many apps that help you prepare for your lessons. What I find really ready-made, and it's so much more convenient to use uh, than other teaching preparation apps would be Canva. Can you see Canva at the bottom, the second one at the bottom there? Okay, keep it free as much as you can, as long as you can. But if you have a tablet, you can use Canva and it's designed. There's so many templates that teachers can use on many platforms, you know. Uh, you can use some templates for your PowerPoint slides. You can use them for your infographics, for your posters, you know. It doesn't hurt to use these because you don't want to draw, you see. You don't want to make up some graphics yourself. So try to use some things like these that are ready-made, okay? So Canva, uh, for those of you who love PowerPoint slides, doing the slides, you must know um, um, Slides Carnival, right? There's a website called Slides Carnival and you can go there and have a look. Okay, another one for the teacher when you prepare for your lessons is Ocean. Can you see Ocean? Okay, the bottom row, the second one. Well, you download Ocean. What you do is on top of Ocean, you feed in the website that you would like to explore. Maybe it's, um, for example, I click Ocean, I go to Wikipedia, Maybe COVID-19 is the talk of the town at the moment, right? So I click in. What Ocean can do is that it keeps the page that you are interested in and you can highlight. Well, let me try. So if you have a tablet, you use Ocean, you go to the website that you would like to use the information later. You click and then you highlight. Can you see me? There, you click and then it highlights. Ocean will keep this page and we keep the highlight intact in the app. You can change the color to six or seven color and it's in your, right now it's, well, down below it says three. It's right here, your bank of interesting information to use later. So, there you go, Canva, ready-made templates, and um, Ocean, right? So you don't have to just type, you know, um, you don't have to always go back and type um, the website all the time. You just go to Ocean, okay? Yeah, at least two of them will help you get through um, the day. 
I would say, well, there's so many things that you can do with the tablet, but if you don't use the tablet, you can also go to the app's websites because they also provide some good templates or some options that you can use when you prepare for your lessons online. Okay. Exactly. Actually, that's what I'm about to say that for Canva, I'm using it myself as well, but I'm using the just the um, the on uh, the browser version, let's say, so it works the same way, and you can sync um, between your computer and your um, tablet if you have two devices. Okay. Thank you very much, Ajahn Sai and Ajahn Si Shon. Okay, uh, is there anything else you would like to add? Um, the question, right? There's a question of how to teach a uh, speaking online, right? Um, there is no uh, bullet. Uh, no single bullet to do the, the, the speaking, <laughs> but um, for me, I use um, three different websites uh, for this to practice at different level. Like first of all, uh, let me share a bit of, of this quickly, right? This is the website that the student can uh, voice record, vocaroo. The student can just simply like click this and record the sound and then play back for them to listen to. That is easy, isn't it? Right. Um, this is this is basically the use of this of this website is to just record the, the speaking and then uh, they can actually submit it to you um, or they can just play back to listen to. Right. The second one is um, Vogue. Uh, it is still loading. Um, maybe you can choose Talk Abroad. You can create an account and sign in and talk to one of the native speakers uh, available right there in every languages. It's a standard one. Um, I, uh, I provide this link to the students a lot, and I think that, um, the students have practiced uh, talking with a native speaker professionally online. Um, not only like English, uh, if you teach other languages, you can do like Spanish, French, German, whatever languages like that's talk abroad, right? And in, and in Vogue, you, um, um, let's say, um, okay, in Vogue, uh, this, you can actually create a classroom um, you can apply, uh, do the, the free version. You can use this account to create a presentation. The student can create a presentation on their own. Uh, they can they can do the, um, the conversation to each other. Or maybe you can use like hangout meets um, to get the student to talk together or break rooms uh, functions that uh, Ajahn O has provided, right? Okay, thank you. So uh, thank you very much, Jan Monton. Uh, actually, I'm just looking at the Q and A from our attendees. Uh, we have one question from Ajahn Wirasuda. I'm not sure if Ajahn Sai, Ajahn Pana has already okay. responded to that. So can we use iPad pencil to highlight the text with Ocean? She already said that. Yes, we can. She typed it. <laughs> <laughs> That, right okay okay yeah you can but well, actually if you use a tablet you use your um, stylus well it could be pencil it could be something that is appropriate to your tablet you highlight and you keep that page with the highlight in the app um, ocean right um, well you can introduce ocean to your students as well because they have to do some research right and they don't have to go back to um, multiple websites all the time. They just go to Ocean for their collection of highlights. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. Okay, uh, so right now, anything else, Ajahn Pingai? Yeah, I just want to say that if you want to teach vocabulary, another good resource is that the Quizlet, right? If, if you want to teach the vocabulary, Ajahn Pingai, you, you, you quite use them quite often. Can you Can you share a little bit about that? website please um, actually it's called quizlet.com mm. okay so you can just search it search it so q u i l e t okay quizlet um it's very very useful i'm just gonna type q u okay q u i z l e t quizlet mm. it's basically teaching you know vocabulary using flashcards but basically you put the the word and the uh, definition and then the system will will do everything for you okay okay yeah. 
then your students will keep practicing using you know games using loads and loads of things okay this is one of the of the tools okay i actually want to share you um yeah, I want to show you how it's done, but unfortunately, we, we have we're limited time. Running out of time, okay? So I, I, I put the name of the uh, the website Quizlet, okay? So you can have a look at that. Uh, okay, so right now I think we have uh, quite limited time. We've got three questions for the Q and A session, okay? So question number one that we have, okay? So I'm just going to uh, share it with. Um, you all, so let me just uh, share the screen quickly. Okay. Okay, so Q&A, question number one. Okay, what tips should you give to your students when they first start their online studies? Okay, so I'm just going to stop sharing right now. So one more time, if you have I'm sure, you know, not all, we all think that students are young and tech savvy, but uh, I think that from our experience in our teaching online, you know, we, we probably know that not everybody is equipped with digital literacy. So what would be your tips? Okay. One of the, you know, important things that we ELT teachers should consider and how, how, how should we deal with, you know, students who are, maybe new to online technology and online learning. Okay, so uh, maybe Ajahn Wonton, would you like to go first, please? Uh, right, um, I think it depends on the level of students, right? If you are engaging with young learners, very young learners, the first rule is to get the student to turn off the microphone, turn off the microphone uh, first, and then um, uh, maybe they can they can they can show on they can show their their video, but they have to 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 close the micro uh, turn off the microphone, uh, because when they come in, they will have to like simply shout out at each other all the time for kids, right? That happened to my nieces all the time. And um, for the for the grown up students, again, as an etiquette of the online um talk online talk, um, it's important to just mute your your microphone a bit before coming in and. Uh, try to um, participate um, in all kinds of activities. For example, um, if, if, if a grown-up students, like if, um, uh, uh, university students, for example, uh, the student would just simply like turn off everything all the time uh, without doing anything at all. Maybe you need to prompt them, for example, in every like single um, half an hour or 15 minutes, uh, get the student to do group work, uh, for example, um, through, through breakout rooms, or uh, to do some 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 Kahoot game, some games. Get out of the um, get out of the 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 teaching context. Back to the play game, so that so the student can enjoy can enjoy more and engage more through online learning. I think that's that's what I can suggest. Like uh, make it more interesting and get the student to to participate in all activities that you 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 would love to do with the students. Right. Okay, so mute your microphone. <laughs> That's a very good tip. And actually, uh, if you use Zoom, um, you know, you as a teacher, you can mute the, your students' microphones <laughs> just before yes. they enter the room. So uh, that, that's quite a useful function. Okay. Now, uh, as I said, Sean, is there anything else you would like to share? Any tips for, you know, students, how to deal with students who are new to online learning? Um, I would say that you have to expand, if it is the first time that you meet them during online class, you should spend 10 minutes like um, walking them through all the functions, all the tabs and everything that they can do, right? And it was what we tried to do when we kind of failed a little bit <laughs> in the beginning, right? You, you can see that some of um, our participants didn't um, see the slides and things like that because they didn't really know how to use the tools completely. So I would say that you have to spare. Maybe if your class starts at night and you have some time to spare, you can ask your student to come to the meeting room at 8.50, let's say if they are okay with it, or spare 10 minutes for, for those kind of like demonstration of what they should do to utilize the tools as best as they can. Okay, thank you very much, Ajahn Sichon. Uh, Ajahn Panak and Ajahn Green Gray, uh, if you have anything else to add, and uh, in addition to that, just uh, one question. Somebody mentioned that sharing their camera, you know, can be something that's 
not very comfortable for, for, for many students. Maybe you would like to, if you can, you know, share something about that as well, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, maybe Ajahn Sai first. Um, when it comes to sharing camera, I would say that if I want them to share their camera, so example, we have a quiz and there's a, well, we set up our own protocol for having everyone show themselves, right? So that they, well, they, they're showing the teacher that they're not te cheating or anything, but I think you have to tell them well in advance. Well, for example, in the third week, we're going to have uh, a quiz, you know? So make sure that you are ready for, well, your camera on, you know, having your camera on or something. I agree with um, a comment that sharing uh, or turning on cameras could be uh, sensitive because there's some episodes of cyberbullying, students being teased by peers because they share the cameras. So just as I said, tell them in advance when they're going to share their screens, okay? And for what purpose, right? So they get ready. They can defend themselves by dressing up nicely, being in a friendly um, setting, you know? Right, that's, that's something we can do. Mm -hmm. Um, can, can I just add something about sharing camera because I think that it depends on the level of the students as well. What I mean by the level is, you know, to do with primary school students and, you know, university students. I have two sons and um, my sons, you know, they have to attend online classes during this time. So they are forced, okay, it's like a rule that they have to, to show their face every time they attend the online lessons. But if you teach university students, like I myself, you know, we all, we, we all teach university students. I think that it's, it's a little more difficult to actually tell adult students. I mean, they're not adult, adult, but they're old enough, you know, mm. it's, a bit more difficult to tell them turn on your camera otherwise i'll kick you out of the room so uh, so i think like ajan sai said you know uh you, you you usually during normal online lessons i wouldn't force them but um i sometimes have um online group discussions and they will have to be assessed by that like what we're doing now by zoom or by google meet and so on so i will tell them in advance and you know actually they they, they get ready and then you you can see that they look very pretty they look very handsome just because they're home because they know that they are told in advance. So that's a very good point that you, it, they should be told in advance and you should set some rules, you know, especially for people who are new to online learning. So thank you very much. What about you, Ajahn Kuen Kai? What else should I say? Because all of you have said everything already. So um, I have two more, two more things to ask. So the first one that, um, just just make sure that the internet connections work quite well, okay? And just tell the student to check every single time that we have class. Otherwise, it will be like me today. And the second, the second, um, the second issue is about the gadget they have, okay? Because um, since it's online, they need to have some devices, you know, ready to 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 learn. So that's that's are the two important things that I think that they, uh, we we need to tell them in advance that you know check first before we have classes. Right. Okay. So thank you very much. So those are all the useful tips for you know people who have just started uh, online learning, especially the students. Now we're going to move on to the second question. Question number. Two, okay. We talked a lot about how to use YouTube, use, uh, using uh, online materials now. Um, let me just share, okay. So you can see question number two, okay. How do authentic materials help students learning and engagement? Authentic materials. So uh, Ajahn Ken Kai, since you were the last person to speak, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> The opportunity to be the first person who can answer question number two. Uh, first well, sharing. Okay, thank you very much. Authentic. Okay, so <laughs> thank you, as I've been saying. And um, well, actually, we have talked a lot about the um, the use of authentic materials, especially when when Atan Monton or Atan Mood talked about you the use of YouTube. Of course, that. Um, 
using the reel on you using the um authentic material always catching the attention of the students right and also now today we talked about the varieties of english and then we can use you know from many resources for example the the good resources is from youtube um, you can actually have a small video clip to show the student to attract them like, you know, you don't need to be a perfect uh, speakers of uh, English right now. So you can, you know, kind of use them to engage and also use them to motivate the student to learn English more and more. And also if um, other, other thing else that you can do is just if you have the authentic material, yourselves like for example if you want to teach vocabulary about the bell then then you can have the bells here okay <laughs> okay i have i have used this bell too you know like kind of kind of thumb and then like, this is a bell and you know this is this how, how how to catch the attention from the students so also you can engage all the students as well and also some pictures that you have you know a lot of a lot of you as uh, teachers or, you know, as um, uh, you, uh, not only university uh, teachers or the high school teachers that you have been, you know, traveling around maybe your countries or maybe, um, you know, other other countries that you can actually show the, the, the picture of, the, uh, of, of, of yourselves and then you can have them, you know, integrate uh, those pictures and let the student, you know, talk about uh, or describe the pictures even. Right. So that's that's the thing that, you know, authentic material can actually help us as a teacher to engage the students in, in learning English. Yeah, that's what okay. I guy. Uh, what about a time on when you have unmuted your microphone? So I believe that you would like to be the next person. To... <laughs> right. OK. Um, the, the, the role of um, authentic material depends, actually. I feel like uh, when when you when you are not ready, especially when you are thrown to the online teaching um, immediately, I think the, the most important thing is to find the best choice available right there. And the thing is that when when we are online, the, the easiest thing is available resources online. So it, uh, update yourself, for example. For me, I have lists of all the websites of what to do for certain activities. But most of the time, I use YouTube, for example. Um, and I think there's some, some websites to measure, for example, the reading ability, the readability of the, the texts as well, right? So you, you can go to the website. I can show, I, I can share the link later on. Um, what, what website you can, you can put the, the, the reading that you selected, authentic material or not, and put onto this website to analyze whether this is appropriate for your students level of uh, language ability or not. So this is so important to determine as a teacher, not to throw everything new to the students, but try to manipulate it, right? Bring in authentic material, design appropriately, um, and get the student to personalize their own learning so that the learning will be better and fun. That's what I can say. So, thank you very much. In terms of uh, authentic materials, and then uh, you also mentioned about uh, self-study, right? You touched a little bit upon um, what students can do with the authentic materials. Now, uh, we've got a, a question from one of our attendees asking about this balancing online, you know, time with self-studies and homework activities, maybe in, in connection with the use of you know, authentic materials. What do you think, Ajahn Sichon? Uh, what do you think about using authentic materials for the students so that they can study with us? Okay, and so that they can study on, um, you know, online on their own or do self-study or some home homework activities. What do you think should be the balance, the, the proportion basically? You know, like 50-50 or, you know, do it on your own 90 and come study with me for 10%. <laughs> what do you think? That actually would be ideal, right? <laughs> I mean, um, but I think there are two, kind of like two factors that you have to think about. Um, usually I would say 50-50 or maybe if you can, I would like to put more weight to self-study actually. I don't know, but, but I feel like when you talk about um, distance learning, it doesn't mean that we always teach online like this, but it means as a teacher, we should be able to kind of like supply our students with a lot of resources that they can use to study on their own. And we are kind of like a facilitator, right? right? We try to, to um, 
help them motivate them to be someone who can study by themselves with our guidance so i would love to have a lot of time for them to study by themselves however what we are facing right now as a teacher is that we have to sign the teaching hours right we really have to conduct because traditionally um, our uni maybe our institute or largely people still believe that as a teacher you have to teach 100 of the time unless you won't get like a full paid or something like that so it's very hard to balance those but i would say that if we can supply them with some authentic materials um, we can do something like um maybe flip learning asking them to do some kind of activities before they come to class right and that will be the time when they study on their own but once they come to the online teaching it won't be a pure lecture but it will be kind of like a discussion or helping them teasing out some kind of problems that they have during their own time doing their self studies whatever the prop the problems they have during those time we can come and chat in a group or maybe individually one on one as well you can do many different kinds of session with your students to talk about that so that would be one of the way to do it maybe other ajans may 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 have other ideas to share as well Um, I actually uh, agree with you because when I teach grammar, for example, you know, I will give some some work for my students to study, you know, using video and online resources first, and then I might give them a few questions to think about. Okay, and then they will have to select a few answers, and then we will discuss that in class, discuss the answers, and then I found that that way, it's a bit more interactive rather than you just. Talk for three hours. So you give them something. Yeah, it's a bit like flipped learning. So you give them something to read, give them something to think about, let them practice using Google Form or you know other online exercises, and then you discuss the answers. You don't give them the answers straight away because we don't want them to give them everything. We want to you know scaffold their learning. So which I think which is very important uh, for educators. So uh, last but not least, Ajahn Panna, anything that you like to add? When it comes to um, authentic materials, use of authentic material, try to make sure that um, students feel the need of using those things. I think you have to think of the tasks that students feel um, necessary for their lives. For example, if you're teaching engineering students or science students, and they have to write an essay, right, in English, or they have to write. Some kind of uh, report in English. That's a task to begin with. Something that they feel the need. Okay, and then you have them research materials or some documents that they are familiar with, or that or that they find important to their studies or their um, future careers. You start from there, and automatically the motivation is there because they want to be good. At whatever they are going to do, or they're, whatever they're doing, okay, and you um, pull them in, have them um, make a decision of how the task should be like. You know, maybe you give them some advice and have them control their task. But what you can control is use of English, right, or what you expect of in terms of the language. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, so many useful tips, many useful tools. Okay. Now, uh, actually, we're we're running out of time. Okay. So moving on to our very last question. Okay. Uh, our last question is. Let me just share the screen very, 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 very quickly. Okay. Right. Okay. So last question. Question number three: How do peer review and process learning help measure students' learning? Okay, we have talked a lot about many tools that we can use in teaching. Okay, but do our tools really help our students learn better? 
Is it that efficient? How do we measure that they are actually learning or they have actually learned? So uh, I can see Ajahn Panna now, <laughs> okay, in my, in my screen, on my screen. So uh, maybe Ajahn Panna, would you like to um, say something about this? How do we measure students' learning, maybe using peer review or process learning? Okay. Um, when it comes to peer assessment, you have to understand that sometimes you get a group of students who do, who do not have expertise in whatever they're doing. Maybe you get high school students, you know, they haven't got their expertise, right? Okay. So it's going to be more of, of teacher-centered approach than learner-centered approach, okay? On the other hand, if you have... Um, maybe a bit more grown up students, okay, or even young students with some specific goal of doing what they, whatever they have to do to pass the course, you know, then you can, well, assign tasks or allocate some responsibilities to students, okay, and have them check each other, you know, but I wouldn't include peer assessment into formal assessment or the type of evaluation that you're going to be used to assign grades, right? For me, in my personal opinion, is that peer assessment is meant to motivate students to learn together, to find the value in learning with groups or with their peers, you know? Well, um, I think students love sharing um, things that they learn with their um, peers and they learn from people's mistakes, they learn from people's achievements, you know, right. And they feel at, more, at ease learning with uh, their peers, you know, but I think you have to start, you have to initiate. Uh, uh, it's always about teachers initiating things to students and let them do their things, okay. Um, if you feel that they don't have um, some kind of authority to judge or to assess their peers, you come up with a checklist for them, you know? Well, you can guide them a bit what they have to do and they can take it from there. And don't forget, if you conduct some kind of peer assessment or you lead some peer assessment, you have to walk around. Well, in this case, you have to jump in and out of the split rooms, you know, and ask if they need help, okay? You have to control a bit, you know? But okay, all in all, peer assessment works as long as you set up some protocol, you know, and let them know what they have to do when they help their friends. Thank you very much, Ajahn Pana. What about you, Ajahn Monton? You have unmuted your microphone again. <laughs> so, uh, well, well, I think it's, it's important. Um, I think some of our participants have asked how we do balance the assessment and learning, online assessment, online learning, and things like that, and how can summative assessment come in. I think um, that, that there's, um, there's a gray scale on that. From the teacher's perspective, we do have some standard to cling on, but from the learner's perspective, they love to just have a bit of freedom of choice uh, to pass or not to pass. So I think it's, um, it, first of all, you have to de determine whether um, the, the, the school or the university has regulated this kind of assessment or not. If not, you have to talk to your peer I mean, your team teaching or the teachers in the same department or the same school, what proportion would be the best? And if there is no such talk at all, you may agree with your students. How would they be um, evaluated? I personally think that um, for the online learning, um, summative assessment seems not quite relevant because we can't actually um, catch the students so much like that, um, whether they are che cheating or not. But there are some ways, like if, they, if you just set up one, just only one summative test um, and the, the scores are enough for, the scores are enough for, for the assessment, not too much, not too low. For example, like 30% of your course, for example, 
that can be feasible, I would say. But if you focus heavily on the summative assessment on your course, I think it's kind of the, the washback effect that you, can't, you, you teach for testing rather than uh, teaching the student to enjoy learning the language. So I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's better to, to talk and discuss with your students how to balance with it. But for our language institute right now, um, we do have 70% and 30% um, um, thing. Like 70% would be the live, uh, the live teaching um, on, 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 on online, but 30% would be some kind of assessment, assignment, and all kinds of things so that the work would not be so burdened for the students to work on. And I would say like, if you give too many, uh, too many, too many tasks and, and, and homework for the students, um, you are killing them because you are not the only subject you are uh, the student are taking. Uh, students have to take a lot of subjects at the same time. So I think it's better to balance the classwork and the homework most of the time so that um, in the end, both teachers and students are happy. That's, that's what I can say about it, right? Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, next, shall we move on to Ajahn Korean Krai? And then next to um, next we'll move on to a transition. Okay, you'll be the last. Thank do you. we have do we have time for that? Because uh, it's 2 we 10, have, 12 we 10 have, already. Um, right now, if you have any questions, any additional questions, uh, please leave your question in the QA. Okay, or if you would like to show your voice, <laughs> you can also, but you need to raise your hand so that we can see you. Okay, so maybe a, a couple of sentences, a couple of um, statements before we finish this. Ajahn Sishon, uh, maybe anything else, or Ajahn Green Guy? I, I don't think I have anything else to share because um, both Ajahn Sais and Ajahn Mood have already covered much of the um, you know peer reviews and also process learning. Okay, excellent. Okay, so right now I'm just looking at the um, Q&A. Uh, uh, this one question about distractions distractions from our Ajahn uh, Jongrak, okay, from Litu, uh, from Language Institute in Lampang. For those of you who don't know us, we have two campuses, okay, one in Bangkok and one in Lampang in the north of Thailand. So um, asking about distractions uh, from home because, you know, they just want to laze around and lie in their bed. So Ajahn Wenton, just one remark before we finish this webinar. Would you like to add anything about distraction? Because I think that this is something that many of us would be, you know, interested in. How to stop students, you know, how 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 should we prevent or well, try to stop students from being distracted? Right. There, there, there are certain things um, to, to look for. First of all, uh, for the online version, online learning, if you are the host on your own. You have all the tools to manipulate that. If the students make so much noise, you can just mute them. Or if they have uh, too much things, you can actually control them. But I think it's better to talk to them first, right? Um, what we can do about it. And for, for uncontrollable circumstances, for example, like the mom just come in or the cast just walk through, like I think it's better to just let go. Don't focus on that. Uh, I mean, concentrate on what you and your students are doing rather than, you know, get your attention to those stuff because uh, it's just temporarily, right? Temporarily. So I, I think it's just kind of doing that because we have these all the time for online learning. Someone comes, someone just go, like let them go for quick, quick thing. I think it's understandable for, for both students and teachers' perspectives. Right. Okay, so thank you very much. I believe that uh, we have shared most of the things that we would love to share today. And of course, um, there'll be more webinars coming up from the Language Institute, Tamasa University. Okay, so on the 6th of June, uh, there'll be um, Professor Coxhead, right? From University of... Wellington. Wellington, yes. Yeah. Yeah, University of Wellington. Yeah. Okay. And more and more. Um, in I think in two weeks' time, there will be um, an, another interesting webinar from uh, Professor Willie Renania, uh, working together with um, 
our director, Associate Professor Dr. Supong, oh, but basically we have loads and loads coming here. So please follow us, okay, on our Facebook fan page, search Language Institute, Tamasad University, okay, and then you will see our fan fan page straight away just follow us on there okay and of course as, as you probably know we have our youtube channel as well okay so just search language institute tamasad and you can subscribe to our channel uh some people have asked about um materials that we can share from uh, today's webinar so if you follow us on uh, facebook you will see that we'll be posting more information about you know toolkit that you can use okay so uh Please access it there. Okay, so I believe that that should be it for today. Okay, shame. Okay, it's already two hours. <laughs> time has has gone very. You know, time flies very very quickly. But thank you very much for everyone for joining us, and um, thank you, Ajahn Monton, Ajahn Sishon, Ajahn Panna, and Ajahn Kriyankrai. Okay, for sharing with us all of the superb ideas. How can become how can we survive in this COVID-19 situation? Okay, so thanks everyone for joining us. Okay, uh, hang on a minute. Uh, somebody just raised hands. Um, uh, let me just see very, very quickly. Um, um, somebody has just raised their hands. Um, let me just... Just no, just no right? Just no. I think gone now, right? I thought I saw somebody raise hand, but okay. So uh, one attendee, uh, can, 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 can we get chest notes? Can we allow her to talk for maybe two seconds? We're going to give you two seconds. Okay, so. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Hello? Hi, Chanel. Chest notes, Shotima. Hi. Uh, would you like to ask us a question? Okay, maybe she maybe she, she left might, already. Maybe she yeah. Oh, is she talk? Is she talking? Hello. No. No. Hi. Oh. I think let's call it a day then. Um. Yeah. Uh. Then yeah, if yeah. you have any more questions, if you have any um comments or questions, uh, please see us on Facebook. Right. We are gonna post everything on Facebook. Facebook right? fan page. Okay, so it's language is to Tamasak University. Okay, so that's it for today. Let's call it a day then. Okay, thank you very much. And okay. We'll see you on the next webinar. Thank you. 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 Thank you.